Welcome back to YouTube. We have another game from in-depth tech reviews and here is Google Apps updates roundup number 26 and in this video I'm going to show you some really cool features you have been waiting for. So without further ado, let's jump in. I will start with Google Photos and the most exciting feature to show you is the new locked folder. Google announced in June's feature drop for Pixel devices. When you go to library and then go to utilities, you will see a new card at the top saying set up locked folder. When you tap on get started, it will take you through a wizard to explain to you how the feature works and what you need to keep in mind. And these are the most important things. First, your photos will be hidden from the photo grid, search and the apps that access your device photos. You can open the folder using your device lock screen and also items won't be backed up to the cloud. So when you tap on setup locked folder, it will first ask you for your fingerprint or to use the pin code. So I'm going to use the fingerprint for now. Once you do this, the locked folder will be activated and you can add more items by tapping on this button if you don't have already. But later on, you can use the button at the top right corner and under the more menu, all you get is the help and feedback. So now let's try to add some photos to see how it works. I'm going to add those two photos and you will see here the move button at the top right corner. When I tap on it, it will first give me a confirmation message showing me the same rules I mentioned earlier. And once you tap on move to confirm, it will load for a few seconds and then your photos will be moved. From here, you can do two things. First, you can delete the photos and keep in mind, this is a permanent delete. It will not move your photos to the trash folder first. But once you do this from the locked folder, that's an immediate delete for the photos. Or you can move them back to your gallery. And when you do this, it will give you a confirmation message to tell you that these photos will appear back again in your gallery, on your sync devices and apps that have access to your device photos. You will be able to see the same move and delete options at the bottom of the screen if you have any of your photos and videos open. Also, you won't be able to apply any edits to your photos from the locked folder. And when you keep your phone like this for more than 30 seconds, the folder will lock itself, even if your screen timeout is longer than 30 seconds. So let me show you this. So here you go, the folder is locked back again and it's asking me for either my fingerprint or the pin code. And once you are done setting up your locked folder, the initial card at the top will disappear and you will see the locked folder option under utilities right here. The locked folder also got an extension in Gcam version 8.2.4. So if you take a look here at the top right corner, you will see a folder button. And when you tap on it, it will ask you either to save your captured photos to your normal phone gallery or save them directly to the locked folder. And when you do this, the icon will change to a purple lock. And that's exactly the case for the preview thumbnail. And when you take a photo, it will be saved to the locked folder. And when you open it, you will not be able to go any further. You will only see the photos taken in this camera session. Keep in mind that the locked folder is currently available on Pixel devices only. I checked other Android phones and iPhones and none of them got it just yet. So hopefully Google will expand it in the future. The second feature to show you in Google Photos is the enhanced image search filters. So for example, if you are looking for animal photos in your gallery, it will show you these filters at the top so you can refine your search even further and get exactly what you are looking for. These filters include selfies, creations, animations, collages, videos, and favorites in addition to people. And when you add any of the filters, it will be added on top of what you already have. So for example, here I have animal photos that I'm included in and also I can make that only for creations. Uh, you can remove any of the filters by tapping the X next to it and that's pretty much how it works. And the third change is under the photos timeline. Now when you scroll through your photos you will see a permanent memory on top of each month to show you the best shots taken. So for example here is November 2020 and when I tap on this memory I can go through the best of November and this memory is permanent. You can get back to it anytime you want. So now it's time for today's sponsor. Are you looking for a tool that can transfer your WhatsApp and WhatsApp business chats between iOS and Android? So let me introduce you to iCare Phone for WhatsApp Transfer Tool. It's very simple and easy to use. Just unplug your devices to the computer via USB, choose which device to be the source and which one to be the target, then hit the transfer button, follow the on-screen instructions, 
and wait for iCare phone to do the rest for you. I tried it myself and successfully transferred 2.7 gigabytes worth of WhatsApp chats from my Android phone to my iPhone 12 Pro Max. To get yourself a license, go ahead and click the link in the description below, choose one of the three plans available, click on buy now, then click on redeem coupon code and use my special promo code A7E5E to get extra 30% discount on top of what's already on. And if you want to know more, all the links will be in the description below. Now let's get back to the review. Next, Google Assistant. And it got redesigned playback controls for reading articles. Let me show you how it looks. So as you see here, the media controls looks totally different. They are using the gray color instead of blue. Also, the progress bar is smaller and thinner. The jump forward and backward buttons are now next to the progress bar instead of being next to the play and pause button. There is a new speed button over here and you will also see Google Assistant logo at the top with the back button next to it. And if you are using Android 12 Beta 2, now you can show the power menu using your Google Assistant. So let me show you this. So here you go. Next, Gboard. And it got a small yet useful update. Let's say you are using Gboard in any of your messaging apps like WhatsApp or Google Messages and you are typing something in the text field like happy birthday for example and then go to your emojis page. You will see suggested stickers at the top from the emoji kitchen that matches what you typed in the text field which is going to make sharing stickers with your friends a little bit easier. Next, Google Maps. And now the Your Timeline page got a new tab called Insights. From here, you can check your activities throughout the month. You can first pick the month by using the drop down arrow at the top, then choose the year and the tab on the month you want, or you can scroll through them using the arrows like this. Let's say I'm going to pick June 2021. And here it will show me how many miles I walked, how many miles I drove, what kind of places I visited. And if I want to see the actual names, I can tap on see places. After that, it will give you a section for highlights. This section will include the most unusual events that took place throughout the month. In my case, it says June 14th was my busiest day and June 6th, I drove more than usual. So expect to see things like this based on your activities. Next. YouTube music and it got a new mix under the mixed for you tab called replay mix. This one will include your most played tracks from the past few weeks. The second change is the ability to play songs directly from the search. So let's say I'm looking for a song called black magic. And as you see here, I'm getting the song at the bottom under the suggestions. And when I tap on it and then get back to my search history, you will see I'm getting a separate section showing me the last played songs from the search and also I'm getting an animated thumbnail if the song is actually playing. Next, Google Meet. And now you have the ability to blur your background or choose between different wallpapers to be your background by tapping this button in the video viewfinder. From here, you can choose between two different levels of blurness or one of these wallpapers to be your background. Once you make your choice and join the meeting, so let me accept that on my other phone. So now I'm in the meeting and as you see, I have the same button over here. When I tap on it, I will get a full screen view so I can modify my background. This new feature is also available on the web. Next, Google autofill settings can now be synchronized across all your devices if you are signed in with the same Google account. So for example, when you go to settings and then Google and then go to autofill, autofill with Google and then preferences, authenticate yourself, and you will see a new switch here called sync preferences. If it's turned on, all these settings will be synchronized across all your devices. So you don't need to worry about changing them on each device. Next, Google Chrome for desktop. And now when you highlight any text in the web page and then right click on it, you will see a new option called copy link to highlight. When you copy the link that way and then send it to anyone, the recipient will be able to jump straight away to this part of the page with a yellow highlight on top of it, which is a really nice touch. This feature doesn't exist in Chrome for Android. However, when you open the link, you will be able to see the highlighted text just fine. Microsoft Edge was also able to show me the highlighted text when I opened the link. However, on iOS, it didn't work either in Safari or Google Chrome. Next, Google search. And now there's a bunch of new dogs and cats added to the list of 3D animals that you can check here in this article from 9 to 5 Google. So I'm going to leave its link in the description below to check it out. And if you are using a Pixel phone, now you can remove the weather information from your at-a-glance widget by going to the preferences, 
and then turn off the weather switch go back home and the weather information is gone so that's pretty much it for today those are the new features i spotted in google apps in the second and third weeks of june so i hope you like my video and if you do please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos thank you for watching